So this is the system that failed me. So my problem with this system is when I was in Washington, the solar wasn't charging correctly, as in it would stop taking a charge. I was on the fence on if I wanted to spend the money to buy all the Red Arc stuff to outfit this camper. My original thinking was that if I had problems with this, there'd be almost no customer support. It's part of the deal. I knew what I was getting myself into. But I kind of held off because it works and it does, tries to do a lot of the things that the Red Arc Manager 30 and Red Vision do. And after a two week trip through Washington, um, I had multiple problems with this thing. One being that my inverter randomly turned off. We try not to use the inverter too much anyway. Solar failed a couple times as well. I have 200 watts on the roof and then I have 170 portable. So I had this thing set up. It was taking an amperage. We left the campsite for like five or six hours. We came back in the evening and it wasn't taking a charge. And the sun was beaming right on the solar panels. It was working when we left. It wasn't working when I got back. That's not acceptable for a, a, a setup like this. That's not acceptable to me. I should be able to, to in a setup like this, get close to 100% charge off of eight hours of driving, if the math works out. But I was only getting like 20, 20 to 50 40% on like a 10 hour driving day off of bumper charging. So on that trip, I had the inverter fail, solar stopped working and bumper charging was pretty much useless. So while we were at a grocery store in Washington, I ordered the Red Arc Red Vision system, which is the Manager 30, a 30 amp hour bumper charger, DC to DC charger, and then it'll be the Red Vision system. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna somehow I'm not exactly sure. I do like the elephant, the conqueror elephant here. So I'm gonna to try to keep this intact, which is gonna be a bit of a chore, but I think I can make it work. And then that will turn into like a sort of a window to get in here to get to my fuses on the new setup. And then this I'm going to wipe out. And this I'll put a new piece here and then the Red Vision control panel will sit right here. I'm gonna go over this for a camper because a lot of people put these in their trucks and stuff. But for a camper, it should be relatively straightforward because I'm not running anything new. All the wires should be back here. It's gonna be a, a few simple tools and it shouldn't be that big of a deal because it's all there. So I'll go over a few tips on installing this into a camper, retrofitting your camper. This is gonna be perfect for what I'm looking for because the main thing on these Conquerors, other, they have other quirks, but the main thing is the electrical system is something I'd heard things about and I've been learning that that is for sure the case. I'm glad I didn't pay brand new pricing for this, but I'm gonna fix one of the problems that it has and gut this thing and put in a system that I think will work way better. So I'm gonna get started on that. Another problem I have with this setup, the way Conqueror did this, is if you want to bumper charge, you charge with your bumper. If you want a solar charge, you unplug everything, get out your solar, plug it in. These have a huge roof. I do not understand why they didn't put an option in for solar full time, like a plug on the roof would go a long way. So I, I don't have those plugs yet, but I'll be putting those in. So I'm gonna drill some holes in this thing and run some scan strut uh, weather sealing for the, the cables. And then this thing will always have solar trickling into it because it's just a hassle having to think. I, I'm, I'm spoiled by the FJ. I don't have to think about it. It just does its thing. I want that on this system. Okay, so the Red Arc system comes with pretty much everything you need, especially if you're doing a camper setup like what I'm doing right here. Um, because you don't need a lot of cables, your camper is probably set up, for the most part, uh, it's set up to do everything you need it to do, except for the DC to DC charging. For the length of what I'm doing, I'm gonna be running six gauge wire on the FJ. I had already ran eight gauge wire, but I'm gonna have to replace it with six because instead of a 20 amp setup like this thing has i'm going to a 30 amp manager 30 so that's like another 70 bucks on top of the cost but if you're going into this just do it all right the first time and then uh that's pretty much i think everything i'm going to need something i do recommend is getting some masking tape or getting a label maker and what i did here is i've got one for the 12 volt ports the interior light the fridge the red arc system comes with all this for the fuse panel for the red vision system what these are for is for identifying the wiring inside of this because you're not going to be you're probably not going to have the space to take one light off and then plug it into the red vision and take the next one off so you need to go through and find what powers what and label your wires because you will get mixed up you can use a multimeter or you can use a test light to do some of these tests like if i wanted to find which one of these wires in here was going to my outside electrical port then i would take my multimeter and just check continuity between 
the wiring in here and the wiring outside. Google videos on how to do that if you need to do that. It's uh, multimeters aren't that intimidating and you can get them for pretty cheap. I'll put some links for a few of these tools in the description. Some of these tools that I'm gonna recommend, if you watch my tool roll video, you could do almost everything, actually I'm pretty sure everything with that tool set. So anyway, make labels, figure out your wiring, wrap all the wiring. You wanna know which one is the battery positives, you wanna know which one's your DC to DC, disconnect your batteries before you do any of this so you're not arcing against the inside of things. Like I'm working with a metal setup. If one of my battery cables hits the side of this camper, it's gonna spark and probably do some damage to my battery. So make sure you disconnect your batteries. One other thing to pay attention to, I will take a picture of this so I know what fuses are being used for what circuits, and then that way I can match it with the Red Arc system. 12 volts isn't gonna hurt you. If you have an inverter converting 12 volts into 110 volts, that will hurt you very bad. So turn all your power off before you do any of this, disconnect your batteries before you do any of this, and then you can get started. This is the Manager 30. There are specific ways you can mount this and specific ways you cannot mount this. Pay attention to the manual that it comes with. It seems intimidating, but this, after going over all of the uh, all the information, this isn't gonna be that bad. The Red Vision system, now this is the brains. This is where all the fuses are gonna go, and uh, this is easily removed so you can get to everything. It even has a fuse remover on the inside here. And then uh, you have your 10 amp fuses and your max 30 amp fuses. This is for the heavy loads like the refrigerator and like my uh, pressurizing fan will probably hook to one of these. And then these smaller circuits are for things like lights and things like that, which I'll probably hook multiple lights in, like all the cab lights in cab lights will be connected to one fuse because they're LED, they don't draw that much. The Red Vision system does have the ability to monitor water tanks, but it doesn't come with the sensors. And then there's six sensor inputs here, I believe. Now my water tanks on this thing, I have two water tanks and they're flat and narrow. They're probably twice as deep as this and one's at this angle and the other one's at this angle. So those types of water gauges won't work very well for this. So I'm gonna keep this one that I put in here, the Tapargi system, which measures like by the gallon. Um, but anyway, so it does have the option though for those that are wondering about that. The Red Vision system comes with all the plugs. You use like a screwdriver to tighten it down on your connections. I just need to find a place to mount both of these. This is vented. You will want to mount these in a location where there's some airflow. Don't mount this in a spot where the ceiling's this tall and there's no airflow in here. This thing is already designed with a bunch of holes drilled into it from the factory to where it breathes a lot. I'm gonna start mounting this stuff up. And this is not gonna be a full on how to. Anyway, here we go with this. Looking at this, you can probably understand why I was concerned about customer service, because this is just this. So I've gone through before, and as you can see here, this is fans, interior lights, 12 volt outlets. I actually marked this a long time ago when I was trying to figure out how to wire up my heater. So I've got a lot of this marked already. So I just took pictures of it and labeled it like that. That way I know what colors are what, and that'll save me a little bit of time on my labeling here. I'm still going to label the wires though. I do think that's important for you in the future and for the next person that's gonna own your trailer. Yeah, there's my solar piece that's probably the one failing. I'm kind of lucking out here. It looks like they labeled a fair bit of this stuff about right there. And this part is horrifying. So I'm going to cut all these at the same time. All right, I'm free. I'm going to get some Anderson plugs out of this bad boy too. And now I'm to this part where I just need to start fitting things. The Manager 30 doesn't have anything you really need to get to. So, well, it looks like it could fit in there. I don't know. I think it'd be better off in here and then out of the way, and then it's got its own space to cool off, and then this little area will be a, an area for the Red Vision. Red Vision looks like, looks like I'm gonna mount it on this back wall. I took the little elephant thing. I'm gonna be able to retain that. This is gonna look really cool, I think, when it's done with the portion where the red vision goes will be it won't be perfect but i can do the rest of it this winter have somebody maybe laser cut exactly what i want but for now it's going to be great and so the elephant piece where the fuses used to be in the breakers i'll be able to reach in and get to my fuses without having to disassemble everything i'm going to start figuring out how this is going to fit 
And then basically I just need to figure out my grounds for each side, simple as that, and then start plugging stuff in. I mean, the instructions are pretty straightforward. There's a few things that I had to kind of think about, but it's all in the manual as long as you, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing. But it comes with everything color coded and then it's mostly just set screw fittings. So it's really not that hard to put all this stuff in here. The only time I've soldered and used heat shrink was for the fuse that's going to the whole system. So, and it comes with that fuse and it comes with these terminals, but mine did not come with heat shrink. At least I don't think it did. Usually Red Arc sends that, so they might've just forgot to put it in the box, but you definitely want to heat shrink this because your main fuse going to this whole unit, you don't want anything to be able to like touch it behind wherever you're mounting it and then you know that can start a fire so uh but yeah so i'm just wiring these up right now which are nice fittings and then you can crank them down they're super secure so now i've told this thing that i have lithium batteries and so it's going to take it a while to kind of figure out what this thing uses and what it has because it doesn't know the state of charge right now because it's at like 70 percent when i took it off of the other system and so it's going to take it a while to figure out so anyway that's as far as i've gotten today this thing is a disaster what more can I say? What I'm using here are these scan strut seals. And so basically what you do is it comes with different grommets. And I'm using two because in the future I might add more to these. So I'm just using two because I know there'll be more stuff. I'm gonna put like a, a cellular booster on here in the future. So um, I wanted to go with these versus some of the other styles that ScanStrut sells. But this is just a weatherproof seal system that looks nice. These will each have a wire going into them for my full-time solar setup. Should look pretty nice. It'll be out of the way. This blade obviously isn't that sharp, so doing a little bit of a friction cut. You're running electrical wires. File down your edges. Okay, so this is the original Conqueror setup here. And as I was saying, I wanted to use this door because I do think it's cool with the little Conqueror camper logo. So I did manage to retain this. So now I open this up. The fuse panel is obviously gone or the breaker panel. And then in the back here, I have the Red Arc system. The Conquerors came with way excess wiring, which is good and bad. They wire all of them the same way, whether you get the features or not. These things have a ton of wiring. The, the Red Arc system actually simplifies the wiring quite a bit. So if you see all the labels on the top and on the bottom with the amperages, the 10 amps, 10 amps, and then on the top, it'll say the fan and all that. It comes with stickers so you can label everything the way you have it set up. If you blow a fuse on this system, it will actually light up and show you which fuse is blown so you don't have to use a test light. So I pulled the fuse on the fan circuit to give you an example of what's going on. So the light comes on above the fuse and then the system tells you right away that you've blown a fuse. So it lets you know, it's not just you're turning stuff on, you don't know about it. It'll tell you right away when you have an issue. So you put your fresh fuse in, you let it know that you know, and the system is back to normal. Something to note with the Red Vision system is you don't have to buy it with the Manager 30. You can use it with any of their BC-DC chargers. The Manager 30 is kind of a better setup for especially a camper because then you have shore power. But you can get like the BCDC 1225 like I have in the FJ for its system. I could run the Red Vision to run all the accessories in that as well. And it'll plug in and it'll work basically the same way, except you won't have shore power. But all of the Red Arc systems have green power priority. And this camper did not have solar full time, which is weird. This particular camper came with 200 watts of solar on the roof. You had to plug it into the front of the trailer to get solar, you'd have to choose between solar or DC-DC. Why would you not have solar panels taking your batteries and topping them off? So that was kind of a problem to me in the design of this thing. So that was another reason I wanted to do this because uh, when you're driving, it will be pulling from solar and green power priority from Red Arc will always take the solar first. So if you have a solar array that'll produce 20 amps of energy and you have this plugged in at a campsite to shore power, it'll only actually take 10 amps from the shore power plug. It's always going to take green energy over all else. 
So it did take me some extra time to install this because I drilled holes in the back of this thing. I ran solar cable, because like I said, it isn't set up for solar full time. So I drilled some holes in, ran solar cable. I also ran another solar setup. So now hooking up my portable solar at the that used to be at the front of the camper, now I can hook that up at the back of the camper and it's got its own plug dedicated all the time. So the front's for DC, DC charging, the rear's for solar, and I have full-time solar. I wanted to do this anyway, but I should have done it before that big trip and now I have a system that is going to work exactly the way I want it to work. I can plug into shore power, no problem. I wired that in just like it was before, so it plugs into the side of the camper. And then I have the solar array. Anybody who's watching this has, has owned a Conqueror before. The Conqueror system, I know it can do some of this stuff, but it doesn't do it as well. This setup looks pretty simple on the surface, but you can program these buttons to where instead of just being an on off, that it's a, you have to hold it down to work. So if you are programming this for an electric assisted roof, for instance, you can set it up to where one button is up, one button is down. You can do those sorts of things. It's very programmable on however you want the system to work. If you want it to be a momentary switch, an on off switch, you can do whatever you want to do. They, they really did think this thing out. It's pretty amazing. Now there's some features on this that you can wire in that I plan to do in the future. It'll probably be a winter project for me. Basically, I will be able to set this up to where, for instance, if I wanted, if I wanted my dust fan to turn on every time I start the vehicle up, I can do that. I can run a wire from the vehicle into this system, and then when I start the vehicle, I can program this to where certain things turn off, all the lights on the inside turn off, all of the switches turn off, but the fan turns on. I can do that with just the ignition. Red Arc has a ton of good videos out on how to set this thing up. They have an excellent instruction manual and they have videos on uh, the basics on how to get this thing going. So this is the Red Vision system. This is everything you need to control the entire thing. As you can see, it's pretty warm in here. This thing comes with two temperature sensors. These icons right here are DC, DC, solar, and your shore power. I've got this thing plugged in right now and I'm running the AC off of the camper's power. So as you can see, it's fluctuating here because of the power usage that it has. And uh, I think this isn't exactly right yet. I think it's still learning my battery system because it keeps kind of bouncing around like you see what's going on right here. But what it's showing is that I'm charging right now and I have 28 days of power at this constant rate. This will last for 28 days. It's doing calculations. Now you program this whole system based off of whatever you want it to be. You can put any buttons here and you can change these icons to whatever you want. You can change these icons to whatever you want and you can put multiple pages. This system does five 10 amp circuits and five 30 amp circuits. This has a lock icon on it because I set my refrigerator up on the second page. That way it's kind of off my main menu because I won't ever have to mess with it. Basically, you can't accidentally turn it off. I have my blower fan. And what that fan is, is on these Conquerors, they actually have a fan that will pressurize the cabin when you're driving so dust doesn't come in. So it's, it's a pretty cool feature, but that's what I have that there for. So from the vehicle, I will be able to turn this on with Bluetooth and not have to get back in and out. So check this out on the phone app. Go to my second page here. It's instantaneous. And see right here, you can see an I and an O. You can put in some of these icons, you can choose what you want that letter to be. So this is my inside lights. And this is my outside lights, which are not currently hooked up. Obviously my water pump. And then I have my 12 volt ports and I did all my USB stuff built off of that. You have more options here. So it's gonna show you state of charge per hour on select dates. So you go back here. This is the state of charge per day. This is telling you about where you're floating at and then solar. It'll show you how much solar you have been picking up. So this mode right here is touring mode or storage mode. So in storage mode, it's going to go into a different charge profile and it's gonna turn everything off. I'm gonna leave it on touring mode for probably the rest of summer. I believe solar will always be able to charge the battery so it'll keep itself topped off and it'll basically be on a float charge and uh, it'll keep itself going. All right, now that I got this thing installed, it's time to go use it. Keep an eye out for when I do another walk around soon of all the upgrades I've done over this past year. And if you have any questions about the Red Vision system or anything else, drop them below.
As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.